Hello, welcome to a bit of game dev. I've been a fan of the show Avatar The Last Airbender, so I thought I'd make a water bending effect in Unity. This is how the effects turned out. In this video, I'll go through all three effects to show you how they're made. Before we begin, remember to go to the render pipeline settings and check the opaque texture. Ok, now let's start with the water ball. We'll start with a simple unity sphere and create a lit shader graph. In the shader graph settings, make sure the surface is opaque and the alpha clip is checked. Now, in this part of the shader graph, use the scene color node and apply a distortion to its UVs. To distort the UVs, we're using a simple gradient noise and with the tiling and offset node, we're offsetting it by the x-axis. Finally, in the result, we add a Fresnel node and plug that into emission, while the result of the scene color node, we plug it into the base color. Now you might see the object flashing and glowing. To fix this, go to the material and change its render key to 3000. Now we should be able to see the sphere correctly. Back in the shader graph, we'll add a new segment, which will be the vertex displacement. Here, we're also using a simple gradient noise and offsetting it by the x-axis, then remapping it to go from minus 1 to 1, multiplying it by our property vertex displacement, and then multiply all that by our normals set in the object space, then add the result to our position node, and plug it in our position output. Now we should be able to see our sphere wobbling around. The next part in our shader graph will be the normals. I'm using this texture as a normal map. Here, we sample the same normal map texture with the sample texture 2D node type set to normal. We use the same property for the tiling, but for the other texture we set it half as small. We also offset both of the textures at different speeds, in both the Y and the X axis. Finally, we add both of the textures and plug it into our normal strength node. This will give us a nice water type normals. To make our sphere more water-like, add the smoothness and the specular color properties, and in the graph settings, change the workflow from metallic to specular. Now input our smoothness property to the smoothness output, and the specular color property to the specular color output. Now we can see this gives us a much better effect. For the final part in our shader graph, we'll add the dissolve effect. Here, we use the simple noise, which we offset in the y direction. Then we remap it to go from 0.1 to 1. Finally, plug the result into the step node, which we control by our dissolve property, and plug the result to our alpha. We are now able to dissolve our sphere, but our actual goal is to use the dissolve effect in our particle system. So to convert the dissolve effect, use the UV node and set it to UV1, and add the R channel to our offset. This will give us a way to randomize our dissolve using the particle system's custom data. Next, we'll remove the dissolve property and use the vertex color node. Get the alpha channel, invert it and plug it into the step node. Now the particle system will control the dissolve using the alpha. In the editor, create a particle system and in the renderer, set its render mode to mesh and the mesh to a sphere. Now let's modify the particle system's parameters, like the lifetime and speed, and set the shape to a sphere, till we get the effect like this one. Now assign our water material to our particle system. Let's tweak a few more parameters like the size of our lifetime and the gravity. Play around with these values and see what works best for you, as you always need to do that with the particle systems till you get the effect you're satisfied with. Finally, remember to activate the custom vertex streams and add the UV2 coordinates and the custom 1xyzw. Then in our custom data, set the x value to a random range between minus 1 and 1. This will randomize, so every dissolve starts at a different position. And next, set the color of our lifetime to fade out. Now I'll tweak a few more parameters, but we can see the dissolve effect in action. It gives a nice effect, like the water is dripping down. Now, to create a trail for our particle system, just duplicate this same particle system and parent it. In this new particle system, set the simulation space to world, and the emission to a rate over distance. This will give us a nice trail effect, 
Now all that's left to do is tweak the parameters such as lifetime and the size, and they also change the size of our lifetime curve. Now we have our nice water trail. Next up is the splash effect. The effect is composed of, of several different particle systems. Let's start with the main splash particles, and let's take a look at the shader graph it uses. In the shader graph, we're sampling this simple texture, and using the UV1 node's R channel, we're dissolving it using the step node. We're also using the normals from height node to get the normals for our shader. Finally, we're using the vertex color for our base color and the alpha multiplied by our step node in our alpha field. And the graph settings are set to workflow to specular, the surface to transparent and the blend mode to alpha with the two-sided checked. This shader also has the three properties, specular, smoothness and emission. As for the particle system, the shape is set to a hemisphere with align to direction checked. And in our custom data, the X value controls our dissolve speed. Next we have the small droplets, which is the simplest particle system. For the water trails, we're using the same splash material, with the same shader. But we've set the render mode to none and activated the trails. Now for this wave effect, we're also using a custom shader and a custom mesh. The shader is very similar to the previous one. We're also sampling this simple texture and multiplying it by our gradient noise, which we offset. The rest of the shader is almost the same as the previous one, where we used the step node for our dissolve effect and the normals from height for our normals. The only thing unique in our particle system is this size over lifetime Y value, which gives the wave a kind of falling down effect. For the second wave particle system, the only change is the Y value is a little bit different. And finally we have our puddle. The puddle is using a custom shader graph, which is very similar to the water shader graph used for the water ball. Here we can see these subgraphs. These subgraphs are actually the same graphs used for the water shader. The scene color distortion is actually this part of the water shader graph. Next we have the dissolve part of the shader, where similar to the previous graphs, we sample the texture and multiply it by our gradient noise and use the step node for our dissolve, which is controlled by the UV1 node. Next for the normals, we use the normal map graph which is the same as the normal map shader used in the water graph, and add to it our normals from texture. Finally, the graph settings are set to specular, transparent and the blend mode to alpha. In the particle system, we set this custom rotation so it lies flat on the ground, configure the size of our lifetime, and set the X value of our custom data to a curve to control our dissolve effect, and the Y value to a random value between minus 2 and 2 to add a little randomness for our dissolve effect. And as an added effect we have our spill particle system, which uses the same material as our puddle and moves in the forward direction with a limit to velocity over lifetime applied. First up is a script to control our water ball projectile. It has a function throw which starts the animation and the coroutine throw, which controls the ball. Here we simply lerp from the start position to the target position and move our water ball object. And when we're at a small enough distance from our target, we break. You can also expose this value in the editor. Next, we stop the water particle system and instantiate the splash particle system. We also check if our water ball hit the target at a steep enough angle. And if it did, we instantiate the spill particle system. For our controller, we detect the mouse click and if the water ball isn't created, we create a new water ball and if it is, we raycast to the point and then throw the water ball. That's it for the water ball. Next up is my favorite effect, it's the water bend. This effect is based on splines. Splines are curves we can define in our space, using the points and their directions. As you can see, this system allows us to scale and move our mesh along the spline, 
Luckily, you don't have to create this system yourself. There is a free package called Spline Mesh on the Asset Store, which I used to create this effect. For the water drop, which moves along the spline, we're using this mesh. It also uses almost the same shader as our water ball, only without the dissolve effect. The origin point, which is made up of a water ball which is squished down, and the particle system which uses the waves from the splash. Finally, we have the splash particle system, which is looped, unlike for the water ball. Now this effect is mostly created through the scripts. Let's start with the example contort along script, which is located on our water spline. This is a script which came with the package, which I modified a little bit to suit my needs. On the top we have the various variables, which are used to define the mesh, the material, rotation, scale, and so on. This update loop is only created so I can show the example in the editor, but should be removed otherwise. And let's ignore it for now. The most important function is the init function. This is the function which came with the package, and it generates the mesh and assigns the required values. And finally we have the two custom functions I created, one for scaling the mesh and the other for moving the mesh along the spline. And for the update function it's only used as an example so we'll comment it out. Next up we have the water bending object script. This script modifies the spline and controls our object by moving and scaling it and activates and deactivates our particle systems. It's made up of three functions and let's start with the configure spline. It is a big function but I'll go through parts to explain it. At the top, we remove all spline nodes except for the first two. Then we set our object to look at the target direction. Next, in this for loop, we define the spline nodes. If we don't have enough nodes, we add new nodes. Then we go around in a circle around our object and we set the position and the direction of our nodes. And finally increase the height position for the next node. We can see how the generated spline looks in the scene view. The for loop creates the points in this circular motion. And we can also increase the point count, radius and height delta to see what works best. The final point is set at the target location, with its direction a little randomized. For all these random values you can expose them in the editor, but I didn't want 10 variables at the top and I'm a bit lazy. Now for the coroutine water band. Here we control the animation and the object and move it from the start to the target position. Initially we deactivate all the components, then we call the configure function and initialize the contort script. In the next part, we position the puddle at our start point and animate the scale. When that's done, we activate the spline object, calculate the length of the object and the length of the spline. Then we animate the scale of the object and as soon as the scale is done, we animate the movement. And when our object is close to hitting the ground, we activate the splash particle. When we finish our movement, we deactivate the spline, we stop the splash particle and we destroy the object after 2 seconds. Finally, we have a function called water bend, which sets our target and starts the animation. For the control script, we simply raycast and find the hit point, then we instantiate the water bending object and call the water bend function. That's it for our water bending effect. For the final effect, we have the water tube. The water tube uses this mesh. You can create this type of mesh in Maya using the curves. Create a curve you like, then at the start of the curve create a new cylinder object, then select the top faces and the curve and then extrude the face. Set the divisions to maximum. Now delete the caps of our tube. and open the UV editor. Select our object and in the UV editor go to Modify Unitize. Now double click to select any edge along the tube curve and in the UV editor control right click and then two UVs. Now select the same edge loop on the object and then right click Invert Selection. And then click Stitch Together. Once that finishes, unfold along the Y value and then straighten UVs. Finally select the UV shell and then shift click normalize. In the Unity Editor, the effect contains a water puddle which is a water ball just squished, the same puddle splash effect as we've seen in the water bending effect and the splash looped effect. 
the whole effect is controlled through the animation. We're animating the scale, the particle systems activating on and off, and the properties of the shader graph. As we can see, the shader is almost exactly the same as the water shader used for the water ball. The only thing different is the dissolve effect, where we used the Y value of our UVs to create this dissolve pattern, and then created two dissolves, one from the front and one from the back, so we can control the dissolve on both sides. At the end of the animation, we call the animation callback destroy. For the control script, we also raycast and find the target location, then instantiate the object and point it into the target direction. I really hope you enjoyed this video. The effects aren't super complicated, but there is a lot to cover, so I hope this tutorial made sense to you, otherwise you can download the whole project in the link in the description and check it out for yourself. Please consider subscribing to the channel, it would help a lot. And on to the next video. Goodbye!